Joining us now is Ojinik Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning, Dr. Abati, and morning. welcome back. Looking refreshed yeah, and really you. good. We missed you while you were away. Good morning, Ayo. How are good you morning. this morning? Good, good. Well, all right. Good morning. Rufi on fire. Oh, Jinix. You know you are about to... <laughs> How are you this morning? He did well, eh, Dr. Abati, while you were away. <laughs> well, I guess we shall begin by taking some reactions. First of all, is uh, Governor Wike's birthday today. He's 56 years Happy old. Birthday. All right. Happy All right. Happy birthday to him. Let, let's Minister let's... Wiki. Uh, yes, He's Minister no Wiki. Correct. Do you Minister. know what? It is so difficult. It's so difficult nowadays to, 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 to call him minister because he's still, you know, People have yeah, said that he still has something to himself as a governor in, 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 in River State. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's, let's, let's begin by taking reactions, trailing the Happy demolition of the State House Assembly uh, complex in River State, where there are about 10 bulldozers conducting the demolition exercise as we speak. The demolition is coming as a factional speaker. Edison Ehi led other lawmakers loyal to the state governor, Sim Fubara, to hold a sitting early this morning. It was gathered that Ahi, during the session, said the complex was due for repairs following the explosion that rocked the building on October 30th, 2023, saying the governor will provide an alternative place for them to sit in the meantime. We're also hearing that the exercise may not be unconnected with the recent crisis rocking the House of Assembly oh. after 27 PDP lawmakers decamped to the APC. I mean, we uh, heard from our correspondent this morning, and while you guys were speaking, our live stream was on, and there were so many comments. Let's take some of those uh, comments. Uh, this one is from Shehu. Uh, he wrote, uh, Fubara should come out with his full chest and fight this battle to the last. <laughs> if it is Wike, he will do worse. Well, Far Mornif, well, names are a lot here, <laughs> says Fubara, we are with you all, even though I not from River State, nor stay in Port Harcourt. Then Ilaisu Anate wrote, uh, federal government should declare a state of emergency in River State right now. Well, Hemade wrote, the elections that brought Wike was violent. The election that sustained him for a second term was violent. The last election, and after his exit, is still driving violence, all because of Wiki's ambition. I mean, you can hear users on social media, you can hear people from River State pointing the fingers to Minister Governor Wiki. <laughs> 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 I mean, what, what can I say now? I mean, again, <laughs> happy Governor birthday to, <laughs> to him. Uh, Dr. Batielli, I heard you read out a statement from the uh, commissioner saying that it was because, you know, there was that explosion which I read that rocked in October, and that is why, you know, they are demolishing the complex. But 10 bulldozers at this point are outside. What do you mean? Uh, well, I mean, uh, whatever is going on in uh, River State looks terrible. Yeah. Looks chaotic. And as we usually see under these circumstances, is the people of River State that are shortchanged. The point has been made this morning on this program that one, if the issue is a bombing or the uh, attack with explosives on the uh, River State House of Assembly complex on December 30, it was the main chamber that was attacked would that provide a justification for the leveling of the entire complex? Because what Joe Johnson is telling us in the former statement by the state government is that they got some experts who advise that everything should go. So is that true? Is there concrete evidence in case anybody wants to see the report by those experts, those uh, civil engineers, mm. who said is the entire complex that should go. Because what we saw was just a small portion that was attacked with explosives. Our correspondent, who is on the ground, said, OK, even if you want to rebuild an entire space, you will at least take fires out. Mm. You will take furniture out. You will remove the air conditioning. Our correspondent reported that, no, nothing was removed. It was they were just destroying everything, including the files, the They're documents, so that there will be no records, no records, all the records of the River State House of Assembly. So that would then suggest that this cannot be professional advice mm -hmm. from experts. Or is that part of the advice by the professional experts? Mm -hmm. Joe Johnson will still have to tell us yes. that. 
and the governor has a responsibility to address the people of Rivers. The final paragraph in the state government explanation is that an alternative venue will be provided for the House of Assembly to continue. We want to hope that that alternative venue will not be the governor's office. Because if it is the governor's office, that will be the height of madness. Absolutely. Because the, the principle is the separation of powers. The governor cannot say his own loyalists can come and be meeting in a government house mm. and that they can present budget in government house. That would be the height of impunity. And the people of uh, River State must begin to speak up. Nkotaria that we spoke to, he was saying that the leaders of, uh, of uh, River State have all been compromised. If those leaders were watching Nkotaria, they also have a responsibility to speak up and defend their own integrity. Yes. Because it was their integrity that Okunabo in Kutaria was calling into question. So we want to start hearing from those leaders of uh, River State who have been accused of uh, uh, being compromised to speak up and to say that this kind of uh, crisis that is happening cannot uh, be accepted because it's the people that will suffer at the end of the day. It is all, it's very important for the governor to come forward with concrete explanations beyond the press statement by uh, Commissioner for Information. Because we don't want a situation in River State tomorrow whereby the judiciary will go against the government uh, interest mm. and the governor will say, go and demolish uh, the court. No, demolition cannot be the way to solve the political crisis in River State. Absolutely. That's why we demand an explanation and proof of the advice by those uh, building experts that uh, the Commissioner of Information is referring to. Well said then. We'll take another story. Following the recent accidental military airstrike that killed 84 people in Kaduna State, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the last elections, Peter Obi, on Tuesday, visited the injured victims receiving treatment at the Baru Diko Teaching Hospital and donated 5 million naira. The former Anambra state governor, in a post on X, commended the Kaduna state government for its efforts in bringing soccer to the victims and urged the military to be more cautious and professional when carrying out operations, stating that the occurrence of 16 mishaps, which have claimed about 485 lives since 2009, when the country initiated the war against insurgency, is quite worrisome. This is about, the, I think, the 16th time, and we have, we have a 16th time. Let me first appreciate the hard work and the effort of the military in helping us to secure the country. But then we should also re-examine and ask ourselves this fundamental question about this reoccurrence where we have 16 times and we have lost almost 500 people. Why is this happening and everything? And be able to see how as a government in particular, we can support the military to ensure that these things don't happen again. You know, it brings me into question. I always ask the times when I listen to the present, uh, I think it's chief of defense staff, who said that there are regular uh, allocations are not um, budgetary allocations, are not released to them adequately. And then one question, what is our priority? To release money for non-essential things like SUVs or, or renovations and everything, or to release money to secure ourselves. Because security, everybody knows, is very, very critical to our problem today. That will take our farmers back to farm, which will tackle our main inflationary item, food. Very good uh, gesture by the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. This morning I was uh, uh, listening to a good report from our correspondent Omar Bazwaye who talked about that, you know, nearly two weeks after this whole incident, we are yet to hear from the Senate about the investigation, the ongoing investigation, two weeks after. But it's great that the Senate also, you know, they did donate their 
December salary, 109 million. But before I hear from you guys, uh, in the same vein though, uh, Vice President Kashim Shatima pledged 25 million Naira to indigent female students during the 13th convocation lecture of Al Hikma University in Elorin over the weekend. Shatima, however, told male students to struggle and pay their fees because they are men, just like himself, eliciting some reactions. Let's take a listen before we take some reactions. Sorry, uh, I am gender sensitive. I want to make a pledge of 25 million Naira scholarship. <laughs> to indigent female students. Indigent female students female students without the means to pay for their school fees. The men, I'm sorry, I'm just like you, you can struggle and pay your school fees. <laughs> You know, I'm coming to you on this story. I mean, he got some backlash by, you know, some, you know, male users on social media saying, ah, why now? Yeah. Okay, well, I, you know what, when, when we were speaking and on watching that video, I had to think deeply as, okay, is this a good move or yes. not? I'm pro-women, of course you know that. Absolutely. I'm a woman myself, and I think that um, in terms of gender equity, women have um, more in terms of support that they need to be able to bridge the gender gap. And so perhaps that is what the motive of the vice president was. Um, statistics and research have shown that women are, more, are, are doubly disadvantaged Absolutely. when it comes to access to education, access to finance, especially in the area where he donated. So yes, it's a good move. However, as the vice president, president of Nigeria would say as well that he shouldn't leave out the men. He shouldn't leave out the, out the young boys because when it comes to indigent students, it's not, it, it's not class by gender. Men, you know, female and male students are, you know, are from indigent backgrounds. However, to end this, I'll just say that female students ought to be supported. I am grateful and glad that he has highlighted that. And I think he sent a very strong signal, especially to the north from where he is, where female education has been under serious attack, especially um, from Boko Haram activities. So this is a great move um, by the by Vice President. So for me, I mean, con uh, thank you, Vice President, you know, for that gesture to female uh, students out there. The truth has to be said, yes. You know, society is skewed against female. We have that problem. But I think it's also a big cultural problem we have. In the vanguard of compensating for the harm or the interest that have been done for female all the while, we have now relegated boys or men to the background and it's causing a lot of problems in the society. We're focusing a lot on women, which is a good thing, we're relegating men, forgetting that those women are also going to interact with men. And it's a cultural thing, all right? So he might not understand it, but you hear what he said, you should go and do, go and fend for yourself. And that culture has also seeped into the problem men are facing, that when men talk about mental health, they say, oh, you're a man, you should be able to get over it. A lot of boys are being, you know, relegated to the background. They're going through a lot. There's nobody to talk to for them in society. It is so bad that there's a proliferation of men that are sexually abused, but they can't come out even to talk because they'll look, oh, you're a man. How would that auntie sexually abuse you? So I am seeing that society is skewed away from this young boys and men. Nobody's speaking up for them. But the truth is, we are raising all those great women, which is good in society, but they are coming to interact with weak boys that society have forgotten. We need to speak for and we need to balance it out. So Greater he might not understand it, yeah. but there's a need for balancing that Absolutely. societal prospect out. It's really important. And kudos to Mr. Peter Obi, yes. you know, for the donation. Like he said, more investigation <coughs> needs to be done Absolutely. as regards what happened. But I don't want to be as presumptuous as to dictate to an individual how to spend his money. The 25 million that we're talking about here is the vice president's personal money. It's not public funds. And it may just say in jest because it, it may appear humorous to some people to say, okay, this 25 million, I'm giving it to indigent student, uh, female students, not everybody. But the larger import of uh, the vice president's presence there was that he delivered the convocation lecture. I was more interested in the details of his convocation lecture, in which he was making the case for the importance of education for everybody, 
not, not female, male and female, for our students to build the future of Nigeria, and particularly focusing on technology mm. and encouraging the students that technology is the future. Number two, he talked about agricultural productivity as a way of creating opportunities within the system and job starting the economy. Nobody can argue with that. On that same day, he commissioned the Shetima, uh, uh, the Kashim Shetima uh, School of Nursing yeah. at the university, at the ICMA University. That school of nursing is for both male and female. Two, he commissioned the Faculty of Law Moot Court. That will also be used, you know, by male and female. I don't have details whether it was the one that donated those uh, platforms, but you know, we should be, uh, we, we should have a fuller picture Absolutely. of what the vice president yeah. did there. Absolutely. And we must know, of course, that the vice president is not in the business of selling ice cream. <laughs> so he, he, know, he, he, I, has, he has a right absolutely. to spend this money the way he wants. Well, but you know, I, I really applaud Rufai's advocacy. There's a lot of boys what that I'm are saying, in danger, Andrew, which I actually understand. It president. is, it is. It absolutely. is a societal yeah. culture we need that are to fast destroying for boys. That's what I'm advocating. Absolutely. I don't care absolutely. about what the vice president You can president do whatever, is. whatever you want with president. your money, but you know, we need to it's advocate beyond the vice president. for more boys. That's We're talking about equality here, right? Let's, 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 well, in another development, in a bid to enhance road safety awareness and enlighten market leaders and transporters on traffic regulations, the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority on Monday officially initiated the year 2023 Ember Month's public enlightenment and safety advocacy campaign. The campaign was marked by introducing newly launched last month female elite core. Let's take a look. And I go need the your ginger, brother me. I did for you and you did for me. No be today, you they cover me. Even though we don't see on a regular, I did with you, my brother. Cash on my shame, me we share the money. Everybody is a winner, man. Out there, need a good explanation. I'm on no food for a lazy man. I did for you and you did for me. No be today, you they cover me. Even though we don't see on a regular, I did with you, my brother. Great advocacy. Thank you, uh, Ayo, for sharing that story. But I'll take this story, which but actually breaks my heart. You can take it after this. <laughs> In the meantime, a video showing a female customs officer Demanding money from a passenger at the Mortala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos has gone viral. In the video, the customs officer was seen requesting for the sum of 5,000 naira while clutching the trolley containing the passenger's luggage. Let's take a look. 5,000 is good. I Okay, bring three. I get. How much talk with, talk with, I'll give you. How much do you have? Come put this in for your brother's money, good. Now you give another six. I don't know what I'm doing. Give me two. And I will give you this. Kara, you want you want to most say yeah. I don't carry my can. I first of all carry. I don't declare. I don't give you two. I don't give you one case. Tell me, say no. I give you one thousand. Mama, where they carry the bag? They go now. No, leave my here. Leave my here. Mama, stop. I don't want to be. I don't want to be rude. I beg. I don't want to be rude, rude please. Rude, not rude. Uh -uh. Why, why, why are you why doing this now? Why you give me 1,000? Why you give me 1,000? Mama, I don't want to be rude, I beg. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't want go to be ahead. rude. Go ahead. What you sow is what you reap. Go ahead. I don't want to sow anything. What you sow is what you reap. Go ahead. Now, this story breaks my heart because I'm a woman and I would never like to see a woman in that fashion. Uh, Dr. Abati, really quickly. Well, bribery is a family. Absolutely. Both but for the, the giver and the taker. As well. The other day, we were we, talking about policemen, policemen who were harassing a woman from the Netherlands, trying to extort her. And then here, you find another person saying he will not give any money because he's not carrying uh, materials for the market, yeah. just food. And of course, while Adini, the current. Uh, uh, Controller General of Customs, you know, has zero tolerance for any form of corruption 
or for any form of misconduct. So okay. that woman who has been shown in the video, she knows what will happen to her. Quickly, the first story about the LASMA yes. elite female <laughs> core. I think it's a very good idea. Absolutely. And the awareness Lovely. campaign that they are doing yes. is also very good because they're telling people not to violate the law yes. and not to drive recklessly during the retired period mm -hmm. that is coming and to take safety first and that anybody that breaks the law will be slammed with the law. My only advice, which Governor uh, Sonwolu should take seriously, yeah. now that he's upgrading LASMA, is that members of this Lagos female, uh, why are you people laugh, laughing? <laughs> no, Let me make no, my no, point. Me point. Members of this uh, Lagos <laughs> uh, <laughs> female <laughs> court should not be such persons that will cause a distraction. <laughs> no, because, because you know, uh, 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 if, if they look too smart in their uniforms, they may cause distraction. We may be counterproductive to the awareness campaign that they are doing. So the recruitment should avoid distraction. No, 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 it's a serious point. I hope the governor is listening. We shall take our final story. Let's take our final story in London, England, where 15-time Grammy winner Alicia Keys delivered a surprise performance at the train station on Monday morning. She played a string of her hit songs on a piano donated by Sir Elton John in 2016. The 42-year-old singer was in town to headline Capital's Jingle Bell Ball at the O2 Arena. She mesmerized the crowd with her 2009 hit single, Empire State of Mind, adjusting the lyrics from now you're in New York to now you're in London. Let's take a look. Nothing you can do, you're in New York. Fantastic. Congratulations, Alicia Keys. I mean, like we said, music has a way to mesmerize your soul. I'd like to thank you both for a great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.